If I could have everyone's attention, I'd like to call the meeting uh, June 22nd, public hearing to order for South County Board of Education. Um, the first thing we have is our agenda approval. Do I have a motion to approve? Okay. Motion by Lindsay. Second. Second by, <laughs> really? Wes, all in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Okay. Now if we could say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I have two speakers listed tonight, and um, I'll just go over. We have a timer. He's got to do the presentation oh, first. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting in a, yeah. i got three minutes. Three minutes, Larry. <laughs> All right, so you can hear me? Yeah. So tonight we're gonna to talk about the 2024 millage rate. Um, we are gonna present the millage rate, both for the m and and the debt service with the rollback provision amounts. Tonight um, is the seven o'clock, the last meeting of three meetings. The first meeting was held on June 15th at 5.30. This morning we had a, a meeting at 9 a.m. And today we have a meeting at 7 p.m., which is now. The final board uh, approval, both on the budget and millage, will be June 29th at 5 p.m. The current millage rate that we're um, submitting with the new budget presentation as of last week is 15.3 mils. The rollback vision is 14.635. I'll discuss that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Debt service will stay at 1.418, and the rollback revision for that is 1.2. This is the five-year tax digest history. This text I history is what we have to pr publish in the paper. We published this um, probably three weeks ago, maybe four. At the time, we had a 16.3 budget, as you can see down there on the uh, floor, bottom right, far right column for 2023. As you can see, the gross digest climbed to $25.15 billion. The exemptions climbed to $4.37 billion for net tax digest of $20.8 billion. With a 16.3 millage rate, um, that would generate an additional $49 million, almost $49.8 million, uh, which would have been effectively a 17.25% increase in the amount of taxes we would have collected. Now, with a 15.3, that would drop down closer to the 11 to 10% range. And the reason why the 16 or the 16.3 is still in there is because that's what was published into the newspaper. Correct. Right? That's what was published. Um, so um, right now, uh, this is the 2023 computation provided by the tax commissioner's office. This is called the PT32-1 form. Basically, it's where they go and figure out what percentage tax increase would be uh, based on what it would necessarily be to roll back. And when they say roll back rate, what they're talking about is if we were to lower our millage rate to the millage rate that would produce the same amount of taxes as it did the previous year, in this case, it would have to be 14.635 millage rate versus what we have here at 16.3. When this was produced, this same form was produced about the same time the five-year tax digest was. That's why it says 16.3. At 16.3, that would produce 11.3% increase in the amount of money we would collect on reassessments. Now, when I went back and redid the calculation at 15.3, that drops down to 4.54%. So in this case, you can see that um, the reassessment portion of this that they calculate on is 3.1 or almost $3.2 billion of that $4 billion increase. The rest of it uh, is either new houses or growth. Okay, so, Larry, so just that bottom one, that's only reassessment? Yes. Okay. And that's how the, the taxpayer's bill of uh, right was written back in the early 2000s was what was happening was uh, so much reassessment was going on in Georgia at the time. Even though people weren't raising their millage rate, they were getting large increases in the amount of money they would generate. Now, on the M&O, this M&O 1.418, this was 1.418 last year as well, and the year before it was 2.418, so we did drop it a full mill. If we were to keep it at 1.418, which is what we plan to do, um, the rollback provision would be 1.2. So in essence, the amount of money we're going to collect will be 18.71% more than it was the previous years. So that's what we're going to collect on our debt service millage rate. Now, when we drop the debt service millage rate to 
we knew that we were not going to be collecting enough money under that millage rate at the time, and that's why we reserved out the $33 million in general fund last year, and we also reserved out $18 million just to lost five funds for a total of $51 million that we were going to use in place of that one mill drop. So if you talk about the one mill drop uh, last year we made and the two mill drop we made this year, in essence, you're looking at about $63 million put back into people's uh, po pockets as part of property tax. So that's what basically we've sent back to the economy is about $63 million. And that's pretty much it. Are there any questions? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Now, I will say that we have a boardroom timer. When you come up, the green light will come on, and that's when your three minutes start. Um, when the yellow light comes on, you have 30 seconds. It'll start flashing with 10 seconds remaining, and then it buzzes when the time is up. With that being said, uh, first on the list is Mark Weiss. Good evening. We all know that our taxes went up 20% last year and 20% this year. And I listened to what you guys cut. You guys didn't do no cutting. You just moved money around. Let me explain something. 73% of the budget is in structural salary, right? You just hired the second DEI specialist at West Forsyth uh, Middle School. Yes, you did. I was told by, no, you shake your head because I was told by your staff. That means every school now has two DEI specialists because I know you're a bureaucrat. Yes, you are. You, you, no, I'm not. We, we normally don't Scott, comment, but you're wrong. We, no, no, we don't, I'm not we wrong. wrong. Your wrong. staff told me it. They were, they were pissed. You're wrong. Two DEI. I believe there's two DEIs per school. If that's true, plus your DEI specialist you have now that's called Community from One Foresight Org, which is 100% woke by the Chamber of Commerce, plus you hired a yoga instructor. We just took their salaries, 57, let's say their salaries are, times 38% for the FICA and everything, times two, times the schools. That's $7 million of non-education, non-necessary positions. I beg a bet if we did an audit on your staff, We'll find another $20 million of, of non-education, non-staff that's not necessary. If you look at your numbers, the growth you guys have been spending on positions, and you're using this 1 to 19 ratio, right? Tell the truth. That is not 1 to 19 per classroom. That's one instructor per 19 students in the whole school system. Let's change that. Let's make it 1 to 19 students per classroom. Because all these instructors you're hiring, they're counted as instructors. You can use them for your number. The second thing, that building behind you, that cost us a small fortune to maintain, that auditorium, if that's true, that's the auditorium you tell us that you're using for the school systems, for them to come over and use, that, oh, we're charging them money, it's just a number, you're just moving a number from one ledger to the other ledger. So that means, my son went to West last year, that auditorium West, they don't need no more. They also get a second gym over there, they don't use, they don't need that anymore. Change the classrooms, that could be 10 classrooms. If I go out here 1 to 19, that's 190 new students that can handle in that school system. Second thing is, you're talking about saving money to buy property. Why? We were told by you guys that our schools were designed to expand. We don't need new property for schools. We need to extend it. If we need to expand schools, that's what they're designed for. Second thing is, you, without having any of the board members approve it, allow two school board members, prior school board members, claim travel from their home to this business. It has to be approved by the board members. They never approved it. Matter of fact, I approached one of the board members and asked him about it. He said he never knew about it. Second thing is, if you look at the money and amount, the years they were in, those, both those board members, it equals total what they claimed on travel. So it's a felony. It's what classified the amount as a felony. I'm not an attorney, but I believe that's fraud. And your signature's on this paperwork. Thank you. Okay, next we have Mindy Moore. Good evening, I'm Mindy Moore. I was here last month as the chair of the Forsyth County Republican Party. I presented you all with a resolution that the party passed unanimously asking for a rollback of our millage rate. And I'm here tonight to thank you for doing just that. I appreciate the fact that you found a way to make that happen and give our taxpayers the necessary relief that they needed this year after two 
straight years of record increases. We also hosted a town hall, or well, a property tax forum, where we had elected officials come and talk with our constituents and ask questions, and I appreciate Lindsay Adams and Mike Valdez for participating from this board. It was very well attended, which told us that the community was very interested in finding a way to lower their taxes. And I appreciate, once again, you guys participating, you guys listening. I know your emails have been full of people with concerns, and I personally genuinely appreciate your time in answering all of those people. The feedback has been great. Um, as we go forward, I trust that you all will continue to balance the needs of the school system with the interests of the taxpayers. That I, th I think there's a way that we can take care of our teachers and our staff, and we can also take care of our taxpayers in the county. We've got an exceptional school system here, and we appreciate all that you've done, but we need to be very fiscally responsible when we approach those decisions for spending and budget, and uh, I appreciate that you all found a way to do that. So on behalf of the party, I thank you. Keep up the good work. Would you like to speak? Yes. Okay. I, we didn't. We didn't have you. I mean, you were a little late, but you, yeah. you're welcome to. You can have your three minutes. <clears throat> What's your name? I'm Dan Wolf. Good evening. Dan Wolf. Okay. Yes. Right. Hello, folks. Um, I read the article in the paper. I've been a resident here for 40 years. Several times my taxes have gone up 50 percent, 100 percent. We all know there's two variables, millage rate times assessment. We know that. Um, seems like it's a pretty closed system. You can change a couple of coefficients. Here's something I want to ask you. Are you aware that in high-tech America, for instance, awful lot of corporations, world-famous, well-known corporations, have been laying off tens of thousands, thousands or tens of thousands of uh, highly trained employees, okay? There's a lot of debate as to whether or not we are uh, starting to slip into a recession. Economics very complex. Maybe we are. Uh, but here's a, an honest question. I believe in the newspaper article I saw that on the subject of staffing, there are a couple of points made, one about pay increases, the other about adding, I believe the number was 85, am I correct, new staff members or new teachers, 85 new teachers, was that in the article 85? Sure. I think that's the growth, the growth of the students. So when you grow so many students, they give you a position, the state funds you a position yeah. And because of the growth, it equaled out to 85 positions. Yeah, that's what I thought. So there was 85 additional teachers and, and maybe other support staff. Okay. Well, I would like to ask, is there any way that the school board in this very wealthy county can be perhaps more efficient to um, not add to staff so much. I know what you said sounds reasonable. More students, we need more teachers. That sounds like a very simple proposition. Um, if corporate America can keep being successful, pioneering, profitable, with reduced staff, because they've laid off thousands and tens of thousands, can it be that the school board and governments generally, generally, can figure out ways to um, be more efficient so that costs don't just keep climbing. And then we all know, go to the tax digest, assessment times millage rate, you know. So that's, that's my question. That's my request. Okay? Thank you. Thank you all. I didn't miss anybody else. Okay, thank you all for your comments. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. A motion by Lindsay. I'll second it. Okay, and a second by Wes. All in favor? Unanimous. <laughs>